So that is an example of how the constitution already makes room for considerable amount of federalism. But as you said, it's the appetite of the national government that then becomes the problem. What are the problems with South Africa's political system in terms of the way that it is structured and how could that be improved? Well, Dwayne Essar, who is a strategic communications officer with the Institute of Race Relations, joins us today to discuss the topic of federalism. Dwayne, welcome to the CRA channel. Could you tell our viewers what are some of the problems with the existing structure of our political system? Well, I think the key issue with the existing sort of political system and the way our three tiers of government interact, the three tiers of government being national, provincial and local government, the way they interact is that ultimately a lot of the power resides at the national level, whereas it would be more effective for the powers, for certain powers at least, to reside at a provincial and at a local level, simply because those tiers of government are, are located closer to the people that they are governing and they would be able to react faster to the needs of those communities. So Duane, in terms of the structure of government, you spoke about national, provincial and local government. What are the powers or competencies that are allocated to each of those spheres? Well, in terms of national government, the national government are responsible for quite a few things which they say responsibility for with the provincial government. So, for example, um, they say responsibility with the provincial government for housing and transport, but the national government has exclusive competency over policing, um, which is largely ineffective, as we have seen how ineffective the SAPS is all over the country because the system is managed uh, essentially in a central manner. And then you have local government, which are responsible for your sort of bread and butter issues, your service delivery, um, your daily sort of in your face governance issues of fixing potholes and removing your refuse. Enjoying this analysis? Click here to sign up for our 30 day free trial for more content from the CIA. So Duane, you wrote an article recently where you spoke about the potential benefits of a more federated structure. Uh, could you explain to our viewers what is this idea of federalism and how could it potentially solve some of these problems that we've just described? Well, federalism essentially is a system where our provinces would be given more power. And you can see the system in action in the United States where their states are, are given considerable power um, over the federal government. The federal government is essentially just a distributor of resources. And um, it also has its own sort of exclusive competencies. So for example, in their policing system, you have the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and then you have the um, Central Intelligence Agency, which have their own competencies. Uh, and then you have um, state police, and then you have the sort of district police. So those how, that is how they share power, it's just in sort of that example of policing. How it would benefit us is that the provincial government would be able to take, take charge of certain issues, which they would be able to administer more effectively. So for example, shared competencies like transport and housing would make sense to make an exclusive competency of the province. Because if people are sort of um, using the transport system in your province, it's only it only makes sense that you as the provincial government is responsible for managing and maintaining that system. And the same goes for housing. If housing, if people need housing in your province, it only makes sense that you are responsible for providing such housing and um, sort of allocating housing and determining where it's needed. So Dwayne, I mean, one of the issues as well is around revenue collection. And currently the national treasury collects taxes uh, and distributes uh, funds to the provinces. About 95% of all uh, revenues come from the central collections. Uh, so how would you get around this issue around, around funding of various service delivery initiatives? Well, um, currently the Division of Revenue is, is um, governed by the Division of Revenue Act, the Durable, as I'm sure you know. Uh, so I, I don't think any of that would change. I think the same in, in the United States, what happens is that the national, gov the, the, the national government um, essentially divides the revenues up, uh, essentially gives each state a portion of the revenue and then um, what they do with it is then uh, sort of up to the up to up to them um, in a way. But the revenue is not an issue. What what is an issue is that the way power or where power is located rather. So that not much which, which would change with the revenue system. But I do think that the issue here is the is how the power is sort of um, shared. So Dwayne, in terms of the obstacles in the way of greater federalism in South Africa. 
there are a number, one of which being that the ANC controls eight of the nine provinces. At the national level, it has an instinct towards centralization of, of various activities. So uh, what obstacles do you see in the way of a greater degree of federalization in South Africa? Well, the, the first obstacle is obviously, as you highlighted, the ANC, as they are the ruling party, because what you would need to implement a federal system in South Africa is to amend the constitution, even though the constitution already makes room for considerable federalism to take place. If you want federalism the way it's done in the United States, you would have to amend the constitution. Now, there are a few parts of the constitution that you would need to look at specifically. Um, those are schedule four and five. Um, those schedules uh, detail the competencies of national and provincial government. And it specifically says that even though the provincial government has certain competencies, the national government can override the provincial government at any time. So that is obviously an issue if you're going to want to devolve power and give exclusive competencies to provincial government where national government, for example, cannot in interfere. So uh, that's an issue that you need to look at. And then um, an example would be schedule 156 in the constitution that says uh, local government must be given uh, competencies that would be administered more effectively at local level. So that is an example of how the constitution already makes room for considerable amount of federalism. But as you said, it's the appetite of the national government that then becomes the problem. So Duane, there seems to be a small but growing voice, particularly in the Western Cape, uh, for secession, which a few years ago, I think would have sounded like an outrageous idea, but it seems to be growing in popularity. Uh, what do you think are the challenges here? Do you think that this move towards greater federalism might actually circumvent some of those, those claims of secession in the Western Cape? Yes, I definitely do. And some of, some of the um, interest groups that are involved in the, the movement for uh, the Western Cape to secede from South Africa have actually said that devolution and federalism could be, could be seen as an alternative to secession and would perhaps see the provinces run um, more efficiently and, and in a better manner than the ANC is currently, uh, currently doing it. And if certain competencies, of course, could be handed to the provincial government. So I do think that uh, federalism is perhaps a way to circumvent secession and perhaps just give people uh, the idea that they do govern themselves. Because I think a lot of what lies behind the secession movement is the, this notion of self-determination and people uh, do not feel that they can determine sort of um, the, the way they are governed and by who they are governed. Because even though people in the Western Cape vote for the DA, ultimately the ANC decides how things are done. Well, thanks very much, Duane. If you enjoyed this analysis, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. My name is David Ansara. This is the Center for Risk Analysis. Until next time, take care.